Porygon Z is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's an absolute nuke. At base 135 special attack and 90 speed, this little normal type ducky can pop off with just that. However, its ability Adaptability boosts its same type attack bonus to 2 times rather than 1.5. We can also add Terra Normal to boost it to insane levels with Tri-Attack. Terrastalizing to your original type adds a 2 times power boost instead of the usual 1.5 times, and we throw in some coverage with Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, and there's not a lot that wants to deal with the duck. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like rubber duckies, because this thing is about to pop off. I've been having a lot of fun messing around with some less popular Pokemon, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Landorus. It's been like 14 years, I can never escape this thing for the life of me. But, I decided to toss out the Dewey Spider, and with my bubble intact, I figure... You know, there's a couple different things this Landorus can do. If it's a lead Landorus, it's likely going to Stealth Rock here. I can do a lot of damage even Intimidated with the Liquidation, however. I'm just going to go ahead and set up that Sticky Web. It's going to definitely help out the team in the back. And that's what the Bubble Boy's here for, making things sticky. So they actually end up going for the U-Turn. I'm thinking this means it's potentially like a Scarf Landorus. Uh, pretty common, however, they're going to end up going into Slow King here. So I lay out the old Sticky Web, and I figure, you know, I have like literally base 130 special defense on Araquanid. And I also have nice little stab coverage with the Leech Life. So I figured there's no reason for me not to just stay in here. I am intimidated, so it does do less than half, but it does a nice little chunk of damage and also just heals me back to full. So honestly, the Spider has a really good matchup against their team. Uh, there's really not a lot that wants to deal with this thing. So they're going to end up going for the future site. It's going to hit me hard later, but listen, I'm living in the now, baby. Araquanid is here and living in the present. I'm going to end up going for the Leech Life here. I expect maybe a potential switch back into the Landorus to get another Intimidate. However, they do just stay in and end up going for the Slack Off. So listen, this is no time for a rest, buddy. I'm out here just vampiring the shit out of the Slow King as he's just over there chilling. But they end up switching out, and with that thing's regenerator ability, it's going to come back pretty much as healthy as ever, which is annoying. But they do go back into Landorus here, and it is going to get a second Intimidate. But I'm telling you, Araquanid is not afraid out here, boy. I go for that liquidation here on the Switch, and it still does near half at minus two attack. So I do actually take some Rocky Helmet. That is actually good intel to know. I now know, you know pretty much you know, what kind of Landorus this thing's working with. So... Here I consider switching, but honestly I'm feeling like, you know what, I'm just going to go for another liquidation here. They're going to go for the pivot with the U-turn, and again, even at minus two, Araquanid with its water bubble boost on its water moves does a ton of damage. As they end up bringing in old Wolverine over here, which is going to be the Sneasler. It does float in the air with its air balloon. I go ahead and pop that with an uh, liquidation, does do over half and get a defense drop. The spider is just causing a damn ruckus over here. Popping balloons, we do not give a shit, but... The problem is, I do not have a lot to deal with the Sneasler. It came in with its air balloon, so floated above the sticky web, so it didn't get that speed drop. And considering I did pop the balloon, it lost its item and does activate the Unburden, if I'm thinking about that correctly. But they actually end up going for the Acrobatics on the Switch, and that does a whole ton of damage as I do Curse Body it. However, they are going to be faster, and I was basically planning on coming in potentially on something like a Close Combat. It was worth it to kind of roll the dice that I do win the matchup, if that's the case. But instead, I end up just sacking off the Frost Last, and that is not ideal for you, boy. I probably should not have done that, but we must rebuild, and I can go into Duraludon. With, with Eviolite, I'm defensive as tits, and I can essentially just set up a, a Stealth Rock here. I know that a close combat is going to be a two-hit KO here, but listen, I'm playing for the long game out here. Porygon Z in the back looks absolutely amazing if I can deal with this Sneasler, and I do have the Tentacruel in the back to handle it. So I take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock. It's going to... I said, break some potential focus sashes in the back. They do have mons like the, the Smeargle, so I opt to essentially just trade Duraludon for Stealth Rock. But with the hazards that I have set up and the amount of damage I have on the Sneasler, I still feel like I'm actually in a pretty solid position here. So the Disable is going to go ahead and wear off on the Acrobatics, which doesn't really make a difference, but this now opens the door for me to bring in the Tentacles. So I know that Sneasler doesn't have a move that can Oko me here, plus I figure I can likely chip this and finish it off with the Surf and so Squidward comes in ready to play the clarinet shittily, and it turns out they're going to actually end up going for the Swords Dance here. That's going to make this thing extremely scary. If it could live and attack, this thing definitely, you know, does some sweeping around here, but Tentacruel does not play that nonsense. We go ahead and drown him. I do get a critical hit. I don't think that mattered, as I do have special attack investment on this Tentacruel, so... Down goes one of the biggest threats, 
and now they get another free switch back into the damn Landorus. This thing is grinding my gears over here, but at least it is sitting below half after, you know, the stealth rock damage. And Squidward actually looks pretty nice for me in the back. So what I'm going to do here is make a read. I'm going to switch into the Electivire, expecting them to go for the Earthquake. I can bring this thing in for free, float above the ground with my air balloon, have a nice little birthday party, and then be in a pretty good position because they actually can't break the air balloon unless they go for something like a knockoff. So they actually end up making a double switch. They're going to end up bringing back in the Slow King, and we find ourselves in a little bit of a, a weird matchup situation here. Like, hey, I, uh... How's it going? I didn't actually expect to see you here, but I'm glad to see you because this is now going to is a great matchup for the Electivire, of course, where I can now essentially freely go for the bulk up. I want to try to take advantage of this matchup as much as possible. Still have the air balloon intact, and after a nice little attack boost, we're looking good. However, this thing does go for the Scald, and of course, it does get the burn. It, it would not be Scald if it didn't burn 100% of the time, so... <laughs> even though Scald is like damn near non-existent in this game, I'm still getting Scald burns when it matters most. So, Electivire is in a weird situation here, right? I can't really go for that Supercell Slam, because if they switch into the Landorus, I take crash damage and damn near kill myself. So, I decided to try to make a read here. I'm kind of down bad at this point being burnt, so going for the Ice Punch was just kind of the optimal play if they did make the switch. Uh, it a really high payoff, but they don't, and now I figure, screw it, I'm gonna go for that Supercell Slam at this point. And this thing actually ends up living with like 10 HP, because Slow King straight up never dies. And Electivire gets absolutely shafted by a Scald Burn, what else is new? And while that does suck, this is actually going to open the door for the Porygon Z to come in with his crazy ass glasses and do some tweaker shit. So, I bring in the Porygon, and at this point with the choice specs, a Tri-Attack does a lot to everything they have. And I figure I don't need to technically commit the Terra yet, they're going to end up switching out. They want that Slow King to get as much Regenerator as possible, and they're going to bring back in the Landorus. Uh, who is just standing on the air, how he doing that. He takes some Stealth Rock, of course. With the Specs, Tri-Attack is definitely going to end up knocking this thing out. They probably opt for maybe I go for the Thunderbolt there, but that's going to take care of the Landorus, and again, another huge threat out of the way. And so listen, they have one thing on their team that is really bad for my Sticky Webs, and that is going to be Superior. This thing comes in, touches that Sticky Web, and because of this thing's contrary ability, instead of getting the Speed Drop, it actually gets a Speed Boost. So, I double this thing's Speed, but... I've been kind of preparing in this match knowing that that was going to happen, and if it doesn't have any special attack boosts from one of its uh, one of its Leaf Storms, I'm actually in a position where Porygon can live one. So, we're exactly in the spot we needed to be. It's really, it's it, honestly like working around a bomb when you have Sticky Webs against a contrary or superior team. If it starts to Leaf Storm, you're going to have a bad time. However, I decide it's time to get iced out. I'm going to go for that Terra Normal, because uh, a Terra Normal boosted adaptability specs try attack should end up knocking this thing out. So they're gonna go for that Leaf Storm like we expect. I'm able to take one perfectly, and now we just throw the power of triangles at this dude, and that is gonna end up taking care of the superior. So, again, one of the scarier Pokemon out of the way, if that thing started to set up, we were in a bad spot. But Porygon Z handles it, and now they get a free switch into Weavile. So, listen, we do outspeed the Weavile, especially with the Sticky Web, but if they go into this thing, it likely means it's carrying the priority in the form of Ice Shard, and I am thinking, hey, hold on, Porygon Z has maybe just enough health to take this. They do end up carrying up the Ice Shard. I live it with 5 HP, which is actually insane. And then we just throw an absolute nuke at old Pinky over here, and that is going to take care of it. So down goes the Weavile. And again, if you can set up the Porygon to a position in a match where they don't have a special defensive wall that can take an attack, uh, there's not a lot that wants to deal with this thing. So now in comes the Smeargle. He's got his red paint tail just ready to, ready to paint some death as uh, the Stealth Rock is going to break a potential Focus Sash. So I can now just go for that try attack here, and this thing can go ahead and paint a picture in hell because Porygon Z is absolutely popping off. That is easily going to take care of it, and now their final Pokemon is going to be the Slow King. Now that's the best Mon they have on their team in terms of defensive options for handling the Porygon Z. It also is going to come in with a little bit more health than it had before due to that Regenerator. However, it does not quite have enough health here, and Porygon Z is going to be able to, uh, again, throw the elements at him and finish off the Slow King to close out the match, and we love to see it. Porygon absolutely going crazy, causing seizures out here, even though it was, it was Pikachu's fault, actually. You know what? Pikachu does not, he somehow dodged the blame on that one from that anime episode. But that's going to be the end of the match. Porygon Z, super fun, and I thought that was just a, a pretty cool match. So... While that was a pretty satisfying game, I'm thinking, you know what, let's run it back and get into another match here. You know what, why not? <laughs>
We've got a match here against a super interesting team. It's important to note they're also running the Porygon Z, so I like their style. And hey, if you enjoy these longer videos and are still sticking around, go ahead and comment Ducky for me so I can, I can see something. So let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so this time we have a super interesting dynamic because they're going to end up leading off with the Vicavolt. They're a bug, I'm a bug, I got the Arachnid, and we're both a couple of buggy dudes who are essentially here to set up this Dicky Webs. And that's going to be a little bit interesting because we both have hazard control in the form of Rapid Spin, so we do take this opportunity to both set up our Sticky Web. So, obviously they have the upper hand in terms of, you know, having the electric coverage on the Arachnid. I do have special defense to handle this thing, um, but having Electivire in the back really kind of limits the opponent's opportunities to go for those electric moves, and they really get punished for it if they do hit the motor drive. So, I figure, you know what, I'm going to try him. I'm going to switch into the Electivire here. Expect maybe a Volt Switch to happen, but... They are smarter than that. They instead go for that energy ball, and that does a nice little chunk to Electivar and pops my balloon, and now my birthday is ruined. So thanks for that, Vicavolt. And at this point, I can at least outspeed. I can go for a knockoff here. It does, in fact, get rid of this thing's Focus Sash. It will make this thing easier to kill later. And sadly, though, they do have the, uh, they have the bug buzz to knock me out. So Electivar comes in, tells them to knock it off, and then just dies. So down one Mon already, but this does open a nice little opportunity to try to get something going here. We broke the Sash, and I figured, you know what? I hope you like Fruit Loops, baby. It's breakfast time. I'm gonna bring in the two cannon, and on this particular set, I'm actually running the Wakan Berry. So I can freely outspeed, go for the Swords Dance, and listen, a, a cannon bird with swords is about the scariest thing ever, because it can go for that Thunderbolt here with Electivire gone. It's kind of opened up, but I eat my berry, allows me to take it, and uh, thank you to the berry here. So, at this point now, I'm kind of free to just start blasting. Use this two cannon as a damn gun, and I just throw some rocks at this Vicavolt here. It does take care of it in two hits. We even we even keep three in the chamber out here with that skill link. So, down goes the Vicavolt, and that is important because now they no longer have the ability to set up the sticky web. So, if I can get a rapid spin off, I can have kind of uh, the upper hand on the speed tiers. So. Sadly, I did take a bunch of damage, and this now allows a free switch. So they decide to go into the Hitmonchan, and even though it does take the speed drop, I am, you know, kind of weak to a Mach Punch at this point. However, I can go for the Beak Blast. What that's going to do is heat up the old Beak, and I know that they're going to Mach Punch. They have to make physical contact, which means that they get a burn. So while Two Cannon did not get to do, you know, what it, uh, it would have loved to do here, I at least was able to burn one of their biggest threats here and Hitmonchan is not going to enjoy the burn that much. So, at this point, I can go into whatever I like, and while I do have some options, I decide I'm going to go Tentacruel, and I really just want to deal with these sticky webs kind of as early as possible, knowing that they can't set them back up. It's going to be in my best interest to kind of, you know, get rid of all the stickiness out here. So, Tentacruel comes in. I do also have a good matchup against the Hitmonchan, and they're going to end up switching here, where Tentacruel, while I'm sitting out here just glistening in the damn sun, I'm feeling pretty good against their team. Because they decide to go into Donphan, they get caught up in the sticky web, we're all just caught the hell up out here, and the speed drop is super nice, because I go for the rapid spin, effectively getting rid of the sticky web on my end, and it also does give me the speed boost, which should allow me to be able to outspeed the Donphan, and while we do have coverage against each other, I'm feeling like it's probably in my best interest just to go for the surf here, and it actually is pretty close to being able to knock it out. So I'm going to go for the surf thinking, hey, maybe I kill it. Of course, it lives with like 20 HP, and this allows them to rapid spin away the webs as well. So we both worked so damn hard to set up the webs, and now they're gone. So uh, again, it's, it's really interesting when you go up against teams that are both kind of running the same kind of speed strategies. So we are now on a blank little slate here, and I do still outspeed. Tentacle gets those little tentacles running, and I can finish off the Donphan with a Surf. So that's a pretty big defensive Mon out of the way. Also, unless the Hitmonchan is carrying Rapid Spin, they now have lost their Hazard Control. So I eat some Black Sludge just because that's how we roll, and now they get a free switch into whatever they like, which is going to be the Porygon Z. So while I know that Tentacruel can take an attack here, I actually want to conserve this thing because they have a pretty scary Mon in the back uh, with the Pre Marina, and Tentacruel does a great job at handling that thing. So what I decided to do here is end up switching into Duraludon. And they do end up having the coverage with the Psychic. I obviously take that pretty nicely, and I have a couple different choices here. I can either set up the Stealth Rock, or go for some nice chip with the Body Press. I decide to go for the Stealth Rock instead, as I figured they probably don't want to stay in here. And I need kind of, I'm just out here being a mick asshole with the hazards, for real. But in comes the Pre Marina, and this thing is, it don't look like it, but this thing is scary as hell. I set up that Stealth Rock, which is nice. 
but at this point, I, I don't have a lot that wants to hard switch into this thing, and I don't really know kind of what they're working with. So I decide to go for the Iron Head just to get some chip here, as they end up going for that Moon Blast. Down goes the Duraludon, but honestly, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that. I did what I needed to do in setting up the Stealth Rock, and while I was good against the Porygon Z, I do have some answers still. So... This now opens the door again for the Rubber Ducky to come in, and we are out here tweaking once again, ready to just throw some triangles around. I am going to go for that Terra Normal, knowing that I outspeed here, and knowing that the uh, the Primarina does not have the, the bulk to be able to take an attack, especially after the Terra Normal, and you better hide your girlfriends, because we are stepping out with the diamond on our head, boy. <laughs> Oregon Z is just a funny little dude. So I can go for that Tri-Attack, which is absolutely a nuke with the choice specs. And uh, not only does it look cool as hell, but it ends up taking care of the Primarina. So that's a big threat out of the way. I now that kind of opens the door for Tentacruel to not need to be used against that thing. And Oregon is doing its thing. So they now decide to bring in the Hitmonchan. And here's where the two cannon was actually super important for the late game, because with the burn, I know that I can take an attack from this thing. I also know, however, that for whatever reason, this thing has so much special defense defense and a lot of the time is carrying assault vest but I go for the attack anyway and it, it literally lives it with three HP so that is a bit unlucky on my end as that definitely did have a chance to knock it out we get a little bit of a bad roll um, but regardless I know that I can actually still even take the drain punch there because of that burn and uh, I am still afraid of one thing and that is mock punch so I do want to conserve the Porygon as it's looking to be kind of one of my win conditions at this point. And this is actually going to open the door pretty nicely to bring back in the Araquanid. So I know that they're going to go for the Mach Punch. Obviously, that barely even scrapes me. And that is amazing because I've got some solid damage off on the Hitmonchan. And what I can do here is freely set back up that Sticky Web. And we're now going to have the upper hand on the speed for the rain remainder of the match. So other than, I guess, Mach Punch. But it's fine. The things He's burnt over there. Guy's gloves aren't working right. So... They now switch into their own Porygon Z. They want to come in before the Sticky Web gets laid down. But the good news is, again, people do not realize that Araquanid has... I think it's literally base 132 special defense. This thing is an absolute special tank. And they're actually going to end up going for the Terra of their own here. And they're like, hey, if you want to pu pull out the Diamond Porygon, I'm going to pull out the Diamond Porygon. So they go for the Terra Normal of their own. And uh, while I am frightened, I do have confidence that uh, Araquanid should be okay here. They are going to go for that try attack They're just like, yeah, damn, that actually worked pretty well for this guy. I'm going to try it out. But this spider is thick as a bowl of oatmeal. We're able to tank that hit, and a liquidation with the water bubble boost is going to take care of their Porygon. So they effectively use up the Terra, and the spider remains supreme. So that thing being gone is amazing. And now they're going to switch into one dude who does not get affected, I guess, by that sticky web, which is going to be the Minior. So... He pulls out, suns out, guns out, but then he figures, yeah, actually, I'm going to pull the old, pull the old shields up. It goes into shield form, which means this thing has increased defense, but lower speed. It does still outspeed the Araquanid, and a power gem is going to end up taking me out. Special attacking Minior is super interesting, and down goes my spider. But here's the good news. While this thing is in shields up form, uh, it has only like a base 60 speed, which means even without the sticky web support, Porygon Z does come in at my base 90 speed, and I can absolutely blast the hell out of this thing. So... It's a, it's a fine line of getting this thing below half. You do not want that thing to, uh, to be able to outspeed you. But I can then go for the Ice Beam, absolutely obliterate the Meteor. And that thing actually could have got definitely out of hand, but luckily the Ice Beam takes care of it. And now they are down to one final Pokemon in the form of Hitmonchan, who has just been burnt in agony this entire match. So it comes in on some Stealth Rock here, and now the time comes to see if a Burnt Mach Punch is going to be able to take care of the Porygon. I do still have the Tentacruel in the back. They're going to go for that Mach Punch. I live it with six, which is insane. And the Porygon is able to finish off the match with the Ice Beam. Down goes the Hitmonchan. And the Duck with the Diamond is the absolute GOAT. So that was also a super fun match. It really, like, a lot of close lives and honestly just really cool games. Listen, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did make it all the way through the video, you are the real MVP. Uh, the double matches are, are, are interesting. But thank you guys again for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace out.